Will SpaceX need to rescue NASA's Boeing Starliner crew? Let's check it out. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we're coming to the end of some misty morning. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a technical space day. Will Elon Musk SpaceX need to rescue the Starliner crew? That is the question. Now, it's not like Elon Musk SpaceX would have to send up another Crew Dragon to be able to do that because there's actually a Crew Dragon pod sitting there connected to the ISS right now. So there's almost like a rescue ship that's already there that can be taken if all else fails. But this is an interesting problem because this is the inaugural flight. It's the first flight of the Starliner and Boeing's just been having problems since the very beginning. There was a lot of just delay and delay and delay that happened before this ever went up. And now we're seeing helium leaks and we're seeing a problem with the thrusters and whatnot. We're gonna dig into it a little bit, read an article over there at RS Technica and a few other locations, give you the information, and see what you think about it. These folks, this crew, these astronauts have been up there now about a month and two weeks or so, a month and 10 days or something. They were only supposed to be there for eight days. <laughs> so it's a problem. They need to get them down. Anyways, we're gonna get into this, but before we do, I wanna say that if you enjoyed the video, throw it a thumbs up, that'll be helpful. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not. If you are, thank you. I appreciate that. Click this little button over here, this notification button, so when I go live, when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. If you wanna say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a little thank you button, click on that, give a dollar or two if you like. If not, that's perfectly fine. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks yet, check them out. They're free. Go to jchristina.com forward slash books. And if you want more Starlink specific content, I put together a Starlink playlist just for you. Check it out. Not now, but when you're done watching this video, click on this button over here and you'll see about 300 plus videos that I've put together specifically on SpaceX Starlink. That's helpful how to's, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy. And of course the why, as always say about all of it. This channel has always been about the why and it continues to be about the why. So let's get into this article and then once again, I'll give you my commentary and I wanna hear from you. That's usually the format that we do on this channel. Most important part of the format is hearing from you down in the comment area. Even if you don't wanna leave a comment, leave an emoji. Leave a pink poop emoji. <laughs> leave a satellite, leave a rocket, leave something. Just so that I know that you actually were here watching. I would appreciate that. It starts out by saying NASA's astronaut Bush Wilmore and SUNY Williams were supposed to return to Earth weeks ago, but managers are keeping them on the station, the ISS, the International Space Station, as engineers continued probing thrust problems and helium leaks that have plagued the mission since its launch. Five of the 28 reaction control system thrusters, or the RCS, on Starliner's service module dropped offline as the spacecraft approached the space station last month. Starliner's flight software disabled five control jets when they started overheating and losing thrust. Four of the thrusters were later recovered, although some could not reach their full power level as Starliner came in for docking. Williams, who took over manual control for part of the Starliner's approach to the space station, said he could sense the Starcraft's handling qualities diminish as thrusters temporarily failed. Quote, you could tell it was degraded, but still it was impressive, he said. Starliner ultimately docked at the station in autopilot mode. That makes sense. If there are jets or thrusters that are going bad and things start feeling mushy and you're not really able to control it very well by giving it over to software, giving it over to the autopilot system, just simply makes sense. It can then determine what it needs to do. How many are working? Which ones are they? Where are they located? Which ones do they need to change the percentage of thrust to accommodate for those failing thrusters? Manually is a little bit hard for someone to do that. It continues. In mid-June, Starliner astronauts hot-fired the thrusters again, and the thrust levels were closer to normal. Quote, 
What we want to know is that the thrusters can perform. If whatever their percentage of thrust is, we can put into a package that will get us to deorbit burn so that we can come back. Yeah, that would kind of be nice. These smaller thrusters aren't necessary for the deorbit burn itself, which will use a different set of engines to slow Starliner's velocity enough so it can drop into orbit and head for a landing. But Starliner needs enough of the control jets working to maneuver into the proper orientation for the deorbit firing. This test flight is the first time astronauts have flown in space on Boeing Starliner spacecraft, following years of delays and setbacks. Starliner is NASA's second human-rated commercial crew capsule. It is poised to join SpaceX Crew Dragon in a rotation of missions ferrying astronauts and cargo, actually, to and from the space station through the rest of the decade. But first, Boeing and NASA needs to safely complete the Starliner's test flight and resolve the thruster problem and helium leaks plaguing the spacecraft before moving forward with operational crew rotation missions. There's a Crew Dragon spacecraft currently docked to the station. That's what I just told you a minute ago. But Steve Stitch, NASA's commercial crew program manager, told reporters Wednesday that right now, Wilmore and Williams still plan to come home on Starliner. Mark Nappy, Boeing Starline program manager, said officials identified more than 30 actions, five of which were the helium leaks, the five helium leaks, as well as the thruster problems on Starliner's service module. All of these items are scheduled to be completed by the end of next week. So they're having a problem up there, the Boeing Starliner. It's just been plagued with issues, like they said, for years, right? Delays and delays and problems and problems. And finally, they launched two astronauts into space. They're supposed to have been up there for eight days. And now they've been there for about a month and almost a month and a half, month and 10 days or somewhere around there. So it is a problem. Once again, they have helium leaks. They have thruster problems that they're trying to iron out. Now, the reason I think why they have not brought them home yet is because they want to make sure that they are able to get as much of the evidence, let's say, as possible. It's easier to find out what a problem is when you have humans on board that can actually do testing in comparison to relying on what the computers are telling you what the issue is. So by leaving them as engineers now to figure out what these problems are just simply makes sense for NASA and Boeing for that matter, right? So Elon Musk's SpaceX's Crew Dragon pod is already attached to the ISS. Matter of fact, when this Starliner came in approach, the Crew Dragon actually moved the pod, moved the Crew Dragon to another port on the ISS, making room basically for the Starliner to dock. I didn't realize this when I did some research on it. The International Space Station can actually hold eight spacecraft docked to it at one time. That's pretty interesting. That is cool, right? That's a lot of these docking stations that they thought of when they actually built this thing. I wasn't aware of that. I thought there was only a few, but there's actually eight. So the way I look at this, the problem that they're having is if they were to undock from the ISS, when the craft is being set up for deorbit, it needs to position itself exactly opposite in the direction that it is currently spinning around the planet, right? To be able to, well, you know what, let's use this. <laughs> this is actually some of the shielding from, I believe, the IFT2 when it blew up. <laughs> very, very cool, very, very cool. Uh, my son-in-law got this for me. Anyways, we're gonna use this as the pod. Well, once that pod or the Starliner breaks free of the ISS, now it needs to use that RCS system to be able to guide itself or to rotate itself so it's pointing exactly opposite of its current movement around the planet. Why? Basically to slow itself down so it can re-enter the atmosphere. So it will ignite those jets, slow itself down, and then slowly move into the atmosphere 
upright itself, go through the atmosphere at the angle so that the bottom portion of it is taking the brunt of that heat. And then finally, it uprights itself, pops its parachutes, and just before landing, ignites those, I guess it would call it an airbag system, so it lands softly. The problem is, is once it does break free of the ISS, it is out there in space, not connected to anything, and now it's going to rely on those thrusters that it's currently having problems with to orientate itself. And if a thruster goes bad or if multiple thrusters go bad, currently there's five not working properly. I think one is dead and four is not working to 100% capacity. Is it still possible to do? Yes, it is. But once you break free, you're taking a risk that these things are going to work and work properly. So what would you guys do? Obviously, we're sitting on a nice comfy chair, sitting in a studio, making decisions that are life decisions that NASA is going to have to make, Boeing is going to have to make, right? I would probably use those two engineers now, astronauts, to do as much research as they could and then leave everything alone, take them out of that situation and return them to Earth using the Crew Dragon almost as a rescue pod. Okay, that's what I would do. Then I would probably have the Starliner in autopilot mode, if possible, release itself from the ISS, orientate itself, power up those jets to be able to now deorbit, finally come into the atmosphere, right itself, pop its parachutes, blow out those hair bags, land safely, so that you know if there were astronauts on board, everything would have been perfect. But if you can do it through autopilot, I would and allow those two lives to come back on that rescue pod, which would be SpaceX's Crew Dragon. That's my personal opinion. What they do is completely up to them. I don't know if what I'm saying is even possible. Obviously, I'm not part of their team. I'm not an engineer. But to kind of get an idea of how this whole writing itself works, do you remember the game? It was an Atari game from back, I think it was 1979. Atari came out with it. It was called Lunar Lander. And you had that like craft coming in hot and you had to land on a lunar surface and there was all different size and it would be coming in really fast and you'd have to use those thrusters to slow it down and then right itself and then land perfectly. And if you didn't land absolutely like butter, it would blow up. Yeah, that's kind of what needs to happen here, right? But those thrusters, right, that RCS system is what's having a problem to be able to orientate itself perfectly. Because imagine this, if it's coming by, right, at 17,000 miles per hour, all right, and now the orientation has to be like this, but it's off by a degree, let's say pointing away from Earth. When it ignites the jets, yes, it's going to slow itself down, but it's also going to gain altitude because it's going to get further away from the planet. That means that where it lands is going to be way off. It's going to take longer to land, hence it's not going to land where they think it's going to be. Conversely, if it was pointing one degree towards Earth, when it ignites those jets, yes, it will slow the craft down and it will deorbit, but it will be closer to Earth, meaning that once again, where it lands is not going to be where they think it's going to land. So that position, up, down, left, right, that orientation has to be perfect so they know exactly where this thing is going to end up. You don't want to drop Starliner in the middle of Manhattan. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, I might have this all wrong. I might be wet behind the ears. Once again, I'm not an engineer. I want to hear from you. What do you think that NASA and Boeing will do and what would you do? down below. Let's have this conversation. I think it's very interesting. And of course, our prayers go out for those astronauts and we hope that they make the right decision. Anyways, guys, I hope you found this interesting or at least entertaining. If you did, throw the video a thumbs up. That'd be very helpful. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the many years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.